let's do something interesting today. Today, we're going to talk about solar panels heating a greenhouse. Now, when I say solar panels, most people think I'm talking about photovoltaic solar panels, the kind that you see on rooftops or on your calculator that create electric energy from the sun. But there's another kind of energy that comes from the sun, and it's thermal or heat energy. And there's a solar collector that's been designed to specifically take advantage of this heat. And it actually, for the same surface area, will generate more energy. But that energy is at, as heat, not as electricity. And the specific name is an evacuated tube. And they've started to become rather popular, especially with people wanting to heat water. And if you're using water as a heat distribution and storage method, an evacuated tube is a really good way to heat that water because it, an evacuated tube is capable of heating water in even minus 30 to near boiling temperatures. But there's a problem. Simple tech. That's the name of this channel, and we have piles of other videos on greenhouses and growing you should check out after watching this video, specifically on other types of heating, like wood and compost heating, and it goes on and on and on and on and on, and there's tons of videos that address all those different types of heating in our archives. So if you like this kind of content, hit that like button and check it out. Okay, I said there's a problem. And the problem is ROI. And I speak about return on investment or ROI quite a bit on this channel in regards to different ways of heating your greenhouse. So the difference is five, 10 years ago with photovoltaic cells versus evacuated tubes was substantial. Photovoltaic cells were fairly expensive. So were evacuated tubes, but the evacuated tubes generated more energy. They were the clear winner things have changed. If we look at the mega power plants, the big ones that power cities and thousands of homes, and you go back 10, 15 years, they were all thermal. They either had parabolic troughs or they had some sort of mirror system that heated up, uh, that all directed on one specific spot and heated up a liquid, which was then used to turn a turbine and create electricity. Because the specific energy from solar heat was more than photovoltaic, and photovoltaic was very expensive at that time, that's how these plants started building. I mean, different countries started building big versions of solar thermal electric plants. But what's happened in the last couple of years is that photovoltaic cells, the big ones that you see on roofs, are cheap. They've gone down exponentially in price. So now the big solar generation plants that are popping up all over the place aren't solar thermal. They're actually photovoltaic using the same type of cells that you're sticking on your roof, but they're just doing them in mega, mega plants. They're, they're going over thousands of acres or even many square miles and generating enormous amounts of electricity. So if the big plants are using photovoltaic cells now, and they're using it primarily because they're a lot cheaper, then wouldn't that translate down to small individual applications? And guess what? Yes, it does. I mean, obviously, if you're going to buy 10,000 solar panels, you're going to get a price per unit cheaper than buying five or 10 of them. But the cost per watt generation of solar panels is so cheap now versus evacuated tubes, which has also come down in price, but not anywhere near the same kind of comparison. And the other thing is it's really easy to hook up solar photovoltaic cells. They're electric. You just run an electric wire. You're not dealing with plumbing. And it's cheap. So with this new affordable energy generation from photovoltaic cells, the big question comes, how do you store the energy? I mean, for a greenhouse, if we're looking to heat a greenhouse, this is a lot of energy. We don't need the 
energy during the day when the sun is shining. I mean, the greenhouse will naturally heat up from the sun, even at 30 below, to be decent temperatures inside. We need that energy at night when the sun's not shining. So this involves energy storage. And that's where it gets interesting because the other thing that's come down in price on pho photovoltaic cells is they work primarily now with lithium, lithium batteries and the batteries have come down substantially in price. So if you're going to use water for heating, you can still use photovoltaic cells. You just attach them to a water heater and you run a little pump and you run that water heater to your water storage device. Now, whether you're going to store it in barrels or whether you're going to go to the, the large dirt battery, which is heated by warm water tubes going through it, you can do it either way, but the cost starts to get prohibitive. Um, the water barrels tend to not have enough space inside your greenhouse. If you're going to put them outside, it involves an enormous amount of insulation and the cost starts getting high. What's nice is the lithium batteries we can get now are really coming down in cost that make them a serious option that you can use to store that energy. So where that becomes nice is you don't want to just release that energy into an electric heater. They're not the most efficient thing on the planet. What you want to use is a heat pump. So if you're looking to add winter heat to your greenhouse, and hopefully you're using a passive solar type greenhouse so that you've got the ability to keep as much heat as possible. You've got an insulated north wall. You've got an insulated ground floor. You've got some sort of double layer poly or polycarbonate or double layer glass. And you've got some sort of roll up tarp that can help to retain more heat at night in your greenhouse. Now, if you have those things all properly in place, you don't need an enormous amount of heat, but you're still gonna need a fair bit. So if you plug in an electric heater, you're just gonna be wasting a lot of that energy because they're not efficient. If you use a heat pump, you're gonna get and an air heat pump, you're going to get a lot better energy transfer and energy efficiency. So you don't have to store as much energy. So a heat pump is a wonderful way to actually get solar energy put back into your greenhouse at night if you're using lithium batteries. Now, if we're going to compare this to trying to store that energy in a large water storage tank or in a dirt battery, well, you might, dirt battery is going to mean you're going to get an excavator. I mean, even the cheap way to do it, you're looking at thousands of dollars. Well, a heat pump, a couple thousand bucks, you've got it in place. Now, you still need your solar photovoltaic cells, but you have to buy the evacuated tubes either way. So that's a wash. And you really got to do the math on your personal situation because not everyone can dig up their property to get some sort of thermal battery. When if you all you need is some solar panels and some lithium batteries. I mean, sure, we're talking several thousand dollars here, but we're not talking, I mean, depending on the size of your greenhouse, of course, we're not talking enormous, enormous amounts of money. Technology is a wonderful thing. And what's happening is probably that less research right now is going into solar thermal because of the amount of people that wants photovoltaic energy. Um, if the same amount of research was going into solar thermal, they would probably have better solar thermal systems right now. But we have to deal with the world that we live in. And the world we live in right now allows for super cheap photovoltaic solar panels and allows for a decreasing cost. And it seems like every two, three months, they're going down even less lithium batteries. So although you also have to have a heat pump, I mean, with solar thermal, you need a radiator and radiators are fairly cheap, but they're not completely cheap. But if you have a heat pump and adequate batteries and adequate photovoltaic cells to generate heat, you need to do the math on if this is an easier way to go forward, because 
it's something that doesn't require any digging and you can do yourself in most cases. Um, that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed this.